I want to see what happens in Act 3. In Act 3, and I told you, this book actually runs for three days, from 24th of December to 26th. So the span, three days, 24th, 24th to 26th December. Okay, that's the span of this book. Act 1, the events happen on 24th. Act 2, the events happen on 25th, Christmas Day. Act 3, the events happen on 26th, Boxing Day. So, actually the events, act, now in Act 3 now, events begin on 26th evening and they run all the way to midnight. So when the book opens, we see the Helmers, in this case Nora and Helmer, the upstairs in a party. So the Helmers are upstairs in a in a party. After this, now we see Mrs. Mrs. Linde. Mrs. Linde had asked. Krogstad to meet her at, at the Helmer's house. So we see Mrs. Linde and Krogstad meeting and they have a brief chat. And this chat is actually about their past lives. Remember Krogstad and Miss Linda were once lovers in their heydays, in their youthful days. But Miss Linda jilted. That means she left Krogstad and married an old man. Why? Because she needed someone who could finance her life. So they talk about that, about their past. So Miss actually Krogstad offers to retract, take back his letter. But Miss Linde tells, tells him not to. So after that brief talk, we see now, we see Tovard Helmer coming in from the party. Of course, he's, he's with his wife, Nora. And they have, a, they, they have a brief conversation. Immediately after that, we see Dr. Rank. Dr. Rank comes in to bid them goodbye. And as he does so, we are told that this is his last moment with the Helmers because he's going to die after this. So that creates an awful mood in the room. Then now, Helmer goes to read his letters. In fact, they agree that that night they're not going to spend the night together. So Helmer goes to his room to read the letters. And he finds he finds a card, two cards from, from Dr. Rang, which indicate that he's going to die. Then he finds the letter from Krogstad. And this letter is detailing all that happened between Krogstad and Nora. By this I mean the bond. Helma is surprised. In fact, he's shocked. And at that moment, Nora, knowing the truth, wants to commit suicide. In fact, she runs through the hallway and wants to go and immerse herself in the icy cold water. But she's stopped at the, almost at the door by Helma. So Helma gets mad at Nora. He's furious. He accuses Nora of tarnishing his image. The fact that Nora borrowed money from Krogstad without informing Helmer is in, is in itself a big offense to Helmer. So Nora actually, Nora in fact, not tries to, to tell Helmer that she did that out of love, but Helmer cannot take that. So eventually, Nora decides to have a sit down with Helmer. And she tells him that you're going to sit down and have a serious talk. She says, 
for the last eight years, we have never had a serious talk. And so Nora indulges Helma and she tells him that she feels that she has to walk away, <clears throat> that this marriage cannot stand any longer. She has been betrayed by both Helma and her father. And so Nora decides to walk away. Though Helma tries to intercede, he tries to tell her not to go away. But Nora tells him that it's, it's too late and so she decides to walk away. And at midnight, we see her walking away. She packs her belongings and then she walks away. And then at the end of the play, we see the door slamming. So briefly, that is the summary of Act 3. And as I said before, for you to understand any set book, you must, and I insist, <clears throat> you must read the book itself. What I give you here, student, is just a brief summary. You must read it yourself. Now, after that summary, I want us to give you a page-by-page -page analysis. So we shall go to page, uh, page 85. So we're going to look at page summaries. Page summaries. Page 85. This, this is what you are told, the stage directions. The same scene. The table has been placed in the middle of the stage with chairs around it. A lamp is burning on the table. The door into the hall stands open. Dance music is heard in the room above. Mrs. Linda is sitting at the table idly turning over the leaves of her book. She tries to read but does not seem able to collect her thoughts. Every now and then she listens carefully, listens intently for a sound at the outer door. So as I said on page 85, we see that uh, the helmets are upstairs for a dance, okay? So the Helmers, this page 85, the Helmers are upstairs. For a dance. And then Krogstad comes comes in to meet Mrs. Linde to meet Mrs. Linde they want to have a talk that's page 85 now page 86 we learn that uh, Neil Krogstad was in a relationship with, the, with Nora before we are told Nils Krogstad was once in a romantic relationship with no with Mrs. Linde before. So you are told that. In fact, she left him for a richer man because at that time she needed help, financial help. So you are told eh? she left him for an old man who could support her financially financially but this was not out of out of willingness it was out of circumstances she did not have a choice now this what uh, this what Helma says huh? this is what Melinda says now Nils Nils let us have a talk Crowder says, 
can we to have anything to talk about? Ms. Linda says, we have a great deal to talk about. Then Crockett says, I shouldn't have thought so. Ms. Linda says, no, you have never properly understood me. Then he said, Crockett says, was there anything else to understand except what was obvious to all the world? A heartless woman jails a man when a more lucrative chance turns up. Miss Linda says, do you believe I am absolutely heartless as, as all that? And do you believe that I did it with a light heart? Along the way, Kroger says, so that was it and all this, all for the sake of money. Miss Linda says, you must not forget that I had a helpless mother and two little brothers. We couldn't wait for you, Nils. Your prospect seemed hopeless then. So it means... At that moment, Krogstad was not financially stable. So Mrs. Linde was forced by circumstances to marry the old man who died later so as she could take care of her brother's aunt and her mother. Mm -hmm.